Now, Jacinda Ardern, she enjoyed worldwide media adulation and one of the longest uh, political honeymoons in recent history. But finally, the New Zealand people woke up to her disastrous reign. And Douglas, I've got to say, you were one of the first to see through her empty moral posturing. You called her style of leadership performative, caring. Yes, that's right. Um, I've thought this uh, ever since I first really laid eyes on her. I, I think there's a phoniness about the woman. I think there's a fakeness. Uh, uh, you can see it in her weird uh, facial tics and gestures, her weird laughs, and her weird um, overdone uh, pseudo-compassion. You can see it even in this resignation speech where uh, she, she, she sort of... I, I mean, I, I thought it was sort of pretty pathetic, actually. A lot of people say, oh, well, she should be praised for her vulnerability and for showing vulnerability and much more. Here's the thing about Arden. Uh, she she came in by presenting herself as this completely new being, among other things, a female leader, because, of course, we've never seen that in the world before, <laughs> but, but the right type of female leader, one who leads with compassion and care and, uh, and, uh, and a sweet smile to everyone and every child. And the thing is, actually, when it came to the test, she was far from compassionate towards the people of the country she was ruling. She was far from compassionate when she put the people in New Zealand through lockdown after lockdown. On one occasion, because there was a single case of COVID identified in the country, so bang, New Zealand goes back into lockdown again. She wasn't uh, compassionate about all of the troubles that the peoples of the country went through, through those benighted years. You know, so so, so yes, I called her out early for it, and, it's, it and, I, and I stand by that. I think there's a fake form of compassion in the modern era where you, you do all the right shibboleths, you know, you do all the right caring noises, and actually, as a result, you can get away with monstrous things, which is what she did. So I'm very glad to see her go. I've got no pity for her, as she now tells us she's got no fuel in the tank and she's kind of burned out. You know, uh, she should think of the people she burnt through among the population of the country. And she's only going now because she really knows she's going to lose the upcoming election. And Absolutely. from now on, she will be able to go to Davos every year and, and continue the honeymoon. Well, that's it. I mean, people around the world, I think, really, they see the media coverage. They don't see just how inept her government has been and how much they have failed, not just in COVID policy, but everything from housing to, to race relations. Now, to got China. To, to China. The weakness against China, even through COVID, was, was shocking. Uh, Joe Biden, he's another inept leader that the media can no longer protect. Uh, even CNN is now reporting on Biden meeting with his dodgy son's business partners whilst he was vice president. We've known that since 2020, but CNN is finally reporting it after a horror week for the president where we've learned that on at least four occasions his lawyers located classified documents he's not supposed to have. Uh, the FBI is treating Biden very differently to other similar breaches. But despite the protection racket from the uh, the FBI and the Justice Department, the American people want accountability. A new poll shows that around two-thirds of Americans favour Congress investigating the classified documents found at President Biden's home and post-vice presidential office. And in, that includes a majority of Democrats, surprisingly, 52% of Democrats. Douglas, only 16% of Americans oppose such an investigation. Uh, will Biden survive this? Will he be the candidate in 2024? I think not. I, I think there's a very interesting story here. I think that it shows, you know, he was very critical of Donald Trump after the Mar-a-Lago raids. Uh, either it's clear what classified documents are or it isn't. And uh, if it isn't clear, then, then maybe that explains why Donald Trump had them and Joe Biden had them and had them sitting around in one of his garages beside one of his cars and in a think tank that he runs that no one knew he had and at his office, at his home and so on. Um, but but I, I think it is actually she clear it should be very clear that a document with top secret on it for instance if, if briefings about relations with 
Britain, uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, China, and, and more shouldn't be just like left round in the garage. So here's what I think is going on, Rita. I think this is a Democrat. If you look at the sources that this has been leaked to, I think this is an internal Democrat effort to stop Biden running in the next presidential election. Yes. There are a lot of Democrats who want to get him out of the way, but he would be in his mid 80s at the end of his next term he's you know plenty of people in their early 80s and mid 80s are sprightly but uh, joe biden ain't among them um and so i think this is an internal democrat effort to get him out of the way now the big question then for the party is what they replace him with because uh, the bench is not a good one it is a very shallow talent pool indeed. And you're right, this discovery, initial discovery, was made before the midterms, but nobody knew about it until the midterms were uh, done and dusted and then the uh, convenient leak comes around. And also, what do you think about the, the FBI's handling of this, the fact that they didn't even opt to be there where when Biden's lawyers were looking at these documents? You would think that would be, at a minimum, what they would do, given that they raided Trump's residence. Yeah, and I think a lot of Americans are just going to be unhappy about that double standard, simple double standard. Uh, yes, it's, it's Biden's lawyers have been discovering this, among other things. You know, Biden's house hasn't been raided by the FBI. Uh